Welcome to our look at Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, a roll and write set in the Valeria universe. Thank you Daily Magic Games for sending us review copies of these new small box Valeria games. Dice Kingdoms of Valeria comes from designer Levi Moat and features artwork from the Miko. It was published in 2022 after a very successful Kickstarter with retail copies hitting stores now with an MSRP of $30 US. This roll and write game lists for one to four players on the box, but works well with up to five. Games tend to run under an hour, even at the highest player count. Now in Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, you are an Earl managing a small duchy in the time of war. You need to rapidly build up and expand by hiring citizens, building up your duchy, creating a network of roads and clearing the land of monsters in the hope that your duchy is declared the southern capital of Valeria and you are awarded the vaunted title of Duke. You do this through a roll and write system that has your citizens generating resources during a harvest phase, then moving on to an action phase where you will select one of three actions, recruit, build, or slay. For a look at the player sheets, dice, and other components in this Valeria-based roll and write, check out our Dice Kingdoms of Valeria unboxing video on YouTube. Now, honestly, there's not a lot to see here. You get six dice, four standard D6 dice in four colors, and a 2D6 die that looks familiar to Card Kingdoms fans. There are also two thick pads of player sheets, some cards, and a statue meeple. Importantly, the cards include reference cards. Great for teaching the game and pointing out where you may be making a mistake. Event cards for solo play and end game scoring statues in two sets. Finally, you have the instructions, which are very clear and well-written, and use a bigger-than-usual font, which us old folks appreciated. The overall component here is good to excellent. I really appreciate that they use the same style of D6 dice here, as in Card Kingdoms, as the dice are used mechanically the same way. I was a little bit disappointed to see that the color dice didn't have symbols on them, but had pips instead, but really, that's a minor complaint, and if I hadn't played other games in this small box series, wouldn't have even realized could be a problem. Now, while the paper is thick enough to handle pens, pencils, and markers, do be careful as some markers may bleed through, marking the sheets, or perhaps worse, the table underneath. Now, with that, let's move on to an overview of play. Each player takes a set of two sheets, grabs some form of marker or marking or pencil to mark up the sheets, do not use Sharpies, and names their duchy. The statue cards are sorted, shuffled, and stacked, day statues on top of night, and six are revealed and placed where everyone can see them. Determine a start player and give them the start player statue meeple. Everyone will have the same number of turns, and this helps you remember who started things off. On a player's turn, they take all six of the dice and roll them, then complete two phases. The first is Harvest. All players take part in this, not just the active player. So everyone's going to be paying attention when this happens. Players' citizens activate based on the number on the 2d6 dice, both the individual dice and the total of both dice. For each pip you have filled in under an activated citizen, you're going to mark off a pip in the matching building. Filling in these pips can lead to a chain reaction that has you fill in other pips. But more about that after we describe the second phase. Note, you must activate citizens in numeric order, which could mean that you add a pip to a citizen in the middle of the harvest phase, and that citizen can activate that phase. Mm -hmm. Also, if the dice roll generates nothing for you, you get to fill in one pip in the building of your choice. Now, after all players are done harvesting, the active player then takes one action with the remaining dice. They pick one die, yellow, red, or green, and then take the corresponding action. They also have the option to add the value of the blue die to their chosen die. The yellow die lets you recruit more citizens, which will then get you more out of the harvest phase. You slay monsters with the red dice. There are four different monster tracks on your sheets. You spend a red die and then mark off the four left box of the section corresponding to your roll. When doing this, you also get a one gold reward that you fill in on the gold chart. You will get end game points for every monster group you defeat with a bonus going to the player who slays that group first, but everyone else still getting points if they also defeat the same group. Now the green die has you build by filling out road pips on the overland map, starting with an already filled in area. You can only work on one path per action, 
And if you hit a domain, one of the buildings on the map, you must stop and forfeit any leftover pips. Claiming domains gives you either an instant recruit action of a specific citizen type, or gives you a way to modify your dice. Now, while filling in pips in either phase, you will end up filling in special spaces that let you take additional actions. Now, normal spaces are black circles. They give you nothing. Gold circles have you fill out the gold chart. Green squares let you build one pip, so filling in a square on the map. Blue meeple have you fill in a spot on your wall, the defenses around your, uh, your castle. Red shields let you slay, but you don't get the bonus gold like you do when spending a red die. The Black Plymouth lets you claim a statue card for endgame bonus points, and stars give you immediate points. So filling in a special space could lead you to filling in another special space, which could lead to another. You could slay a monster, which in addition to gold gives you a free build. That build may have you fill in a meeple. That meeple has you fill in a spot on your wall, which may have a shield. That shield lets you slay another monster, this time without getting any gold. And that monster may give you a free citizen. You fill in your free citizen, and your action is done. Now the game continues until any one player fills in the last spot on three of the four buildings on their main sheet. At that point, you finish out the round, and everyone totals up their points. You get points for each statue, stars, the domains you reached, and monsters you vanquished. The player with the most points wins. Now, what we just described are the rules for playing with two or more players. Dice Kingdoms also includes a solo mode, which plays a little bit differently. Now, in a solo game, you only have 20 turns, which are tracked by crossing off a tree at the start of each turn. You then harvest as normal, but draw an event if you roll doubles. Events are terrible. They are absolutely horrible, and they usually have you crossing off spots on your sheet so you don't get the reward when you fill them in later. After the harvest phase, you do an action phase as normal, selecting one die and potentially adding the blue die to that one to take one of the three actions. Then you get a second harvest action, except this one, thankfully, can't cause events. Yeah, notice that, a second harvest action. I think that is an often forgotten rule. Now, the game continues until you've taken all 20 turns and you total up your points as normal. Check the rule book to see how you did, and if your duchy becomes the new southern capital of Valeria, or if you're stripped of your rank and spend the rest of your life in the dungeon. So, what did we think of the first roll and write in the Valeria universe? So, I gotta start with, I guess, a bit of a disclaimer here. I have been a fan of Daily Magic Games and their Valeria system games since first trying out Card Kingdoms of Valeria at Origins the year it came out. And since then, I picked up most of the expansions for Card Kingdoms and quite a few of the other Valeria games. I've also been a fan of the designer, Levi Moat's work, going back to our review of Horizons. Now, I will say I don't just dig Levi because he made a good game that we enjoy, but also due to how willing he was to talk about the game, take our feedback on, and how he's continued to engage with our content since. Even to this day, Levi often joins us for our live podcast recordings Wednesday nights which clearly shows a level of taste and intelligence far beyond his years. Now, with those biases in mind, I've got to say Dice Kingdoms of Valeria is one of the best roll and write games I played. Now, I think this would stand even if this was the first game I played of Levi's and if I didn't have as much experience with other Daily Magic games, but I can't really confirm that. Now, what I'm really not sure on is if I would love this particular game as much if I didn't love Card Kingdoms of Valeria. Because this one thing this small box Valeria game does that the other two in this new series don't is feel like the original game. I feel perhaps because of its close ties to Card Kingdoms, the two games might actually work to help sell the other in both directions, mm -hmm. both for people who love one of them and for people who might not know the franchise yet and be brought into it by playing this, moving on to acquires others in the th series as a result. Now, while others in the Valeria series are a bit more standalone. Now, the Harvest phase in Dice Kingdoms actually plays identical to the Harvest phase in Card Kingdoms, with all players getting stuff based on a 2d6 roll and using both the values of the individual dice and their sum to generate resources. It's just that in this game, the resources are pips that you're going to fill in on your sheet. 
In many ways, this is a more compact and tighter version of Card Kingdoms, something you can play in more places with less setup and game length. Now, another thing that ties this game in well with the Valeria universe is the use of the same icons over multiple games. If you played earlier Valeria games, you know blue means magic, red means battling, gold means, well, gold. Um, the colors and iconography here in Dice Kingdoms Valeria are going to be familiar and thus easy to remember for any existing Valeria fans. This encourages crossplay between games in the franchise, as knowledge of one may make the transition to another that much easier. Now, moving on to the gameplay, Sean already mentioned this a bit. It's very tight and solid, as long as you're playing properly. I will say that because of, uh, I say that because the first three games we played, we played totally wrong. Instead of players choosing one die to take a single action every turn, we are having players use all three dice and the choice being which die to add the magic die to. Well, this actually worked rather well, and the game was fun. The downtime got to be really bad, especially later in the game, and we are starting to notice that the end game finish was turning out the same for every player. Everyone had all the citizens, everyone explored most of the domains, etc. And also, don't forget to add gold when you spend a red die. We messed that one up as well, which led to another example of Levi being awesome and approachable as we question why the gold path was so long. The summary cards are your friends here. Make sure you check them regularly, at least until you've had a few plays under your belt. Yeah, don't bury them in with the solo play deck if you don't plan to play solo, because you may forget you even have them. Now, what I think is noteworthy and why I even admit to this is that had we never realized we were playing wrong, I would still be here giving you a positive review. But when the game is played properly, it's even better, way better. Perhaps not surprisingly, playing correctly makes for a shorter, tighter game with a wider range for potential outcomes. When playing wrong games, uh, when playing wrong, games were starting to drift towards that single solution outcome with everyone yeah. becoming uh, homogenous. Now, with only taking one action per turn, this game zips around the table, especially at two players. Holy cow, is it quick back and forth. The game is quick enough and there are enough statues that you can even play it with five players and it works perfectly fine. Again, this was something the designer suggested when we were interacting online and we tried it out and it worked great. Even while eating and drinking during a night out, five players made for a reasonably quick play with no appreciable downtime that wasn't more to do with the food and drink and conversation than the game. Now, this lack of downtime is improved even more by the Valeria Harvest system, right? The fact that it's one of those games where everyone generates something every time the dice are rolled and it gives you something to do. This is a mechanic that I have grown to love in all games that use it. For those who don't know Valeria, Space Base does something similar with its dice rolls. Now, if I had any complaints about this game, it would be in regards to the player sheets. Uh, these are one-sided and very thin. Now, during the unboxing video, if you've watched, I do note I wish they were two-sided, but once playing the first time, I learned why they're not. When playing Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, if you use markers of any type, you're going to get bleed through. Now, for most markers, this bleed through will just show on the other side and not go through to anything else. But with the wrong markers, say Sharpies, this bleed will go right through the sheets and mark up the surface you're playing on, much to my mother-in-law's chagrin. Yes, we learned this the hard way. Similarly, if you just play solo directly on the stack of sheets, you may ruin more than one with a marker. Now, another issue that came up with marking the sheets, there are some symbols you need to still be able to see once they're filled in. So we quickly learned that lighter colored markers are better for still being able to find those scoring stars, for example. Now, my kids are actually obsessed with having different colored marker for each pip type, but I actually don't recommend this as it does slow the game down and what should be a zippy game slows down as you watch children swap markers like crazy. But I will recommend having a special color, at least for the stars. That will speed up endgame scoring. Our Discord mentioned crayons, and while we haven't tried it, this may actually be the best solution. Again, though, only two colors are needed, one for stars and one for everything else. Now, so far, everyone I played Dice Kingdoms of Valeria with has enjoyed it, and everyone I played the game with wrong thought it was better when we played by the proper rules. Of all of the three new small box Valeria games, which we'll be reviewing all three, so watch for those, um, that just released, this is the one that feels the most like the original Valeria game, the Card Kingdoms of Valeria. And the game length is honestly perfect for deciding to play a couple games in a row. 
I've played a few times now, both wrong and right, and <laughs> enjoyed it thoroughly all times. While I admit roll and rights aren't generally my thing, I think the connection to Valeria and the familiarity of it helped make this one work for me. Now, before I wrap things up, I do want to mention the solo mode in Dice Kingdom Valeria. Now, I'm not much of a solo player, but I did give it a shot because I did want to address it during the review here, and it's pretty solid. It is super quick, taking like 10 to 15 minutes to play a full game. The solo rules are simple enough, but I found there was just enough going on that I would lose track of exactly what I'm doing and what steps I've taken and what I hadn't yet. I would lose track of what part of the turn I was in. Now, this was especially true due to the second harvest. I also think in every game I played, I finished at least one round by picking up the dice and starting the next one without marking off a tree, because it's really easy. You finish off your thing, you're like, all right, next turn, roll, let's go, and you get the flow going. Uh, forgetting to mark off those trees means I may have given myself one or two extra turns. What it actually felt like is I needed as a supervisor. I needed someone there watching me to catch me when I screwed things up, because I swear I must have. Or I'm really good at the game, because I, I, we were the southern capital twice. Or at the very least, turn off, remove all the distractions, and really focus down. Perhaps the game could be a good excuse for some people to disconnect and get some quiet me time. True enough, I will submit with kids and noises and my phone going off and everything else. And you wouldn't think so. You're like, how hard is it to remember whether what phase you're in? But I'm like, wait, I just rolled the dice. I generate did was was that the start of the turn? Or was that the harvest phase? That happened a couple times. Or even just filling out pips. If you get distracted, you're like, you're doing the chain. And you're like, wait, I had two pips in that. Did I fill both in? Or did I stop when I put the guy in the wall and finish the guy in the wall? Anyway, solo mode. It, it was enjoyable for what it was. I, I'm still sure I cheated. If you were a longtime fan of specifically Card Kingdoms of Valeria, or enjoy other dice-based resource generation systems, like Sean mentioned Space Base and other Bimachi Koro, there's a few of them out there now. I think you're going to really enjoy Card Kingdoms of Valeria. Now, if you're a longtime Valeria fan in general, not specifically Card Kingdoms, this is a great addition to the series that feels like it fits in well, lore-wise, design-wise, and mechanically. If you dig Rollin' Rights, this is one of the best I played, and I can strongly recommend you check it out whether or not you know anything about Valeria games or Daily Magic or Levi Moat's other games. If you don't tend to like dice games due to a high randomness factor, you still might want to check this out. Of all the dice games I played, this has some of the most ways to mitigate the randomness. Now, this starts off by using a 2d6, which gives you a bell curve for resource generation. The fact that you are selecting one of three dice to take an action, so you've got lots of choices, and the ability to add magic to those dice as well. And then there's the domain powers that let you flip, increment, or decrement the dice. Like, of all dice games I've ever played, this one feels like I have the most agency over what I'm actually doing. Personally, I am loving this game, as are my usual gaming group, and I don't expect that to change. Up next for me, though, is going to be checking out the Winter Expansion, which gives you two new player sheets to use while playing. Well, that's it for our review of Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, a roll and write Valeria game that stays true to the lore and mechanics of its predecessors. What's a roll and write or card version of a game that you enjoy just as much, if not more, than the original game it's based on? Let us know in the comments. I also welcome you to check out my written review of Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, where I got into more detail about the game and how it's played, and share a bunch of pictures from our recent plays. You can find that at tabletopbellhop.com. 